There's a lot of fashion channels out there that tell you what not to wear, and I'm one of them, so I don't think it's a bad subject. But the thing that stands out about some channels is that they use the premise that if you don't follow their advice, you're not a man or you're too old to wear certain clothes. And the bulk of their content seems to be on these sort of controversial subjects, which I suppose is the point because they want to get clicks. And some of these videos do have a ton of views, so perhaps there's some valuable information in there. So I'm going to check out a few today and let you know my thoughts. And in the spirit of fairness, I've picked out more recent videos because fashion is always moving forward. So I don't think it would be fair for me to pick out a seven year old video and critique it. I'm sure if you look back on some of the videos on my channel, there's some really outdated information as well. By the way, I'm not here to cause drama. If I think there's some bad advice, I'll call it out. But if there's some good advice, I'll praise it as well. I've got my laptop over here, so I'm just going to play some clips from the video, not the whole thing. If you want to watch them, I'll leave links to them down in the description. So the first video is going to be from the channel Men's Fashioner, and it's called 10 Things Adult Men Should Never Wear. And the first piece of advice is to not wear vintage or graphic t-shirts. So let's spill the tea so you're leaps and bounds ahead of the other guys out there. Straight away, I just want to pick up on something she said there. Putting yourself leaps and bounds ahead of other guys out there. Who exactly are we competing against? Um, when you're getting dressed, are you thinking about how it's going to put you ahead of other people? I'm not, but... Maybe I'm missing the point of the video already. I get it, I get it. You've got an awesome collection of vintage graphic t-shirts that prove your cool factor is over 100. Again, proving your cool factor is 100. I don't think this is why people wear vintage t-shirts. We all have our own interests and vintage t-shirts are a way of expressing that, in my opinion. Seeing a grown man in a graphic tee, it just feels very out of place in a culture that's come so far with men's fashion. I find this quite ironic because in my head, telling adult men they shouldn't wear t-shirts that express their interests seems like it's turning men's fashion culture backwards, if anything. The next one is socks and sandals. Now, the grandpa vibe of a tube sock and a strappy Birkenstock is enough to make my stomach just ugh, turn. I'm not sure about her reaction, but yeah, it is a bit of a funny combination to be honest. And it's almost weird to see sandals without socks these days. The combo is also, it's just downright confusing. Obviously your feet are too chilly to go at it alone in your sandals. So then why not just ditch them entirely and wear a sneaker? I have to agree with this. It doesn't really make sense. Um, but as someone who wears socks and sandals from time to time, I'll give my interpretation. You're sort of getting the best of both worlds. You're getting the freedom and ventilation of a sandal with the warmth and coziness of a sock. Sandals should never be seen outside of the pool or the beach anyways. To completely ban sandals outside of the beach or pool seems kind of harsh, especially in warmer countries. And I also think sandals can look fantastic in certain outfits as well. A pair of espadrilles is a breathable and comfortable alternative. It's funny because in my opinion, espadrilles are disgusting um, and I'd much prefer to see sandals instead, but it all comes down to personal preference. The next one is keeping the foil sticker on your cap. Absolutely no grown man should be walking around with a baseball cap that still has the glaring foil sticker on it. Honestly, I do agree with this one. Like she says in the video, it's to show the cap is authentic, but when you're wearing it on a $20 cap, it doesn't really make much sense. Who exactly are you doing this for? You're a grown adult with grown adult money. It's a little contradictory to say that because earlier she was talking about dressing to impress other people. Um, and now she's saying, why are you trying to impress other people? So yeah, bit of a mixed message. The next thing to avoid is Crocs. Crocs are, and will always be, unforgivably ugly. So yeah, Crocs are definitely a divisive shoe and I can see why some people would hate them. Even though they have a classic clog silhouette, uh, the materials, colors, and holes can put a lot of people off. Are you really choosing to finish it off with a pair of Crocs? Really? I actually think the outfits she's shown there with the Crocs look really good. And if you can make something as comfortable, functional, and ugly as a Croc look good in an outfit, I say go for it. Sneakers, espadrilles, you name it. There's a vast selection out there that are endlessly more stylish. Again with the espadrilles. Um, I'm looking at these choices of alternatives that she's put there and I'm not convinced 
that they're nicer than Crocs, to be honest. Next up is to not wear too many accessories. Now, wearing mounds and mounds of jewelry could be perceived as a virtue signal to your sensitivity. That's the first time that I've heard that wearing accessories could come across as virtue signaling. Uh, I agree that too many necklaces or bracelets can look a bit overwhelming, but it can be done. It just requires a little bit of thought. Invest in some key pieces like a stylish watch, simple cuff, or a slim chain necklace. I totally agree with this. If you want to accessorize but don't know where to start, a few simple pieces can make a big impact on your outfit. The next piece of advice is to not wear oversized clothing with oversized clothing. And then the trend of oversized clothing paired with oversized clothing. She's done our boy Daniel Simmons a dirty here. I'm really confused because I think the fit he's wearing looks fantastic. That is the right way to style more relaxed fit clothing. So she advises to wear something like a baggy top with slim pants. But in my eyes, this is one of the most outdated looks you can have at the moment. Wearing huge pants with a huge shirt is doing you absolutely no favors. Again, is it just me or does that outfit actually look really good? So if you have a bigger shape, it can actually make you look even larger. And if you're on the skinny side, it can actually make you look like you're swamped in fabric. This is a good point, actually. Wearing clothes that suit your body type is an easy way to look great and feel confident. However, you don't need to avoid oversized clothes. As long as a piece is intentionally designed to be oversized, you can definitely combine them together and look good, no matter who you are or what your body shape is. Next up, skinny jeans. For the crime of skinny jeans. Trying to make your drainpipe American Apparel pants happen in the 2020s? I mean, that's pure delusion. Yeah, I definitely agree that those spray-on skinny jeans that we used to wear weren't the best. They had very few redeeming qualities. Although that example she showed, I thought those jeans looked really nice. There are plenty of slim fit or tapered denim fits that you can try. Yeah, slim fit is definitely the way to go. It'll never go out of style. It's a safe bet if you're not sure what to wear and it'll go with pretty much anything. So good advice there. The next thing to avoid is white socks. I want you to burn your white socks. You need to burn every one of your white socks. This one seems a bit dramatic. Like white socks are surely the most versatile and inoffensive socks you can wear. As a grown man, you have a wealth of colors and patterns to choose from. Hang on, earlier she was saying graphics look immature and now she's suggesting we wear socks with sushi and tacos on them. Guys, retire your off-white whites for some socks in neutral tones like black or go have some fun and grab them in any color or pattern that puts a smile on your face. I can't think of anything worse than switching out my white socks for something like this. Not only do they look like children's socks, in my opinion, but they'd be so difficult to style because the colors are all over the place. I have to completely disagree with this one and it puzzles me because this video is apparently all about looking like an adult man and then we're being advised to wear piano socks. <laughs> Next up is fanny packs. It doesn't matter whether you're wearing it around your fanny or as a crossbody bag. These accessories, they're just not flattering to anyone. Now, starting with wearing a fanny pack as an actual fanny pack, I don't think I've actually seen anyone wearing those as fashion accessories. But crossbody bags are a bit different in my eyes, and I've talked about them a few times on the channel. I'm not much of a fan of them, to be honest but that's mostly because they're small and just don't look very functional. And they'll definitely age you up from fashion forward gentleman to uncool dad. I think it kind of has the opposite effect. I see a lot of youngsters wearing crossbody bags. So if anything, it ages them down. But yeah, I'm not really a fan of them either. The next one is loud designer logos. Loud designer logos are the plague of streetwear and luxury fashion brands. My immediate reaction is to agree with this. It can look a bit tacky when you're wearing overly branded clothing. I reckon that it has something to do with the amount of fakes on the market. You see a disproportionate amount of people wearing like 400 pound Gucci t-shirts. Guys who buy pieces like this are usually trying to flex their wealth in a gross fashion. Yeah, there's gotta be a part of it which is about flexing. It's pretty unavoidable in the fashion world, really. Back in the day, it was certain colors or fabrics, and now it's brands and logos. Appreciation for fashion comes in developing your own personal style. It's about knowing yourself, your taste, and what you consider to be on brand for you. This is actually a fantastic message that I wholeheartedly agree with. 
and talk about in most of my videos as well. And if that happens to be a sweatshirt with the Supreme logo printed on it, it really is a lazy juvenile approach. Oh, so close. It was a great comment about wearing what you like, but apparently if what you like is a Supreme hoodie or anything with a logo on it, then that's wrong. What a shame. Last one on this video is ripped jeans. What is the point of buying jeans that are already ripped? It's hard to argue with that logic really. A lot of people say you should earn your rips. I think some carefully placed distressing or discoloring can look really good though, so I'm not completely against it. I still see all over Pinterest when researching stylish outfit ideas for men. I think we found a big problem here. Pinterest is not the place to go for men's fashion ideas. I don't know why, but the content on Pinterest seems to be completely outdated, especially in men's style. It's like a time capsule of what men were wearing in the mid 2000s. So yeah, if you're using Pinterest as a reference, it's a bad start. Invest in some well-fitted dark wash jeans to truly show off your personal style. For sure, some fitted dark wash jeans are a good way to go if you're out of ideas. But again, she mentions personal style. If ripped jeans are what you like the look of and feel comfortable in, then you should go for them. Overall, I have mixed feelings about this video. There's some really good advice in there, but a few confused messages. It's of course built around her own personal taste in men's style, and that's no surprise because I'd do the same thing if I was making this kind of video. I'd say her taste is quite vanilla though, not really looking to push many boundaries or stray from the norms of traditional men's fashion. And that can come across as quite restrictive, but yeah, that's just my personal opinion. The second video is from Alpha M and it's called 25 items grown men should never wear. By the way, he goes through these really fast, so I'll try to keep up. First up is a leather jacket. If you're a little bit older, right, the motorcycle inspired jacket doesn't necessarily look as good cause it is a little bit more edgy. I agree that a biker jacket is a bit more edgy, but I don't think that's a reason not to wear one, especially if you're over 25. If anything, a biker jacket on someone really young would look stranger than on someone older, in my opinion. And the lightweight bomber, guys, the perfect lightweight jacket for any single one of you, regardless of your age. I'd also argue that a bomber jacket is way more youthful than a biker jacket, so I'm surprised he's recommending that over a biker jacket. A lot of guys will wear like a badass leather jacket, but then the rest of their style looks like a boring basic dad. He's right, putting a good outfit together is key when wearing a leather jacket but he doesn't tell us how, so that's a bit of a miss there. Number two is Apple Watches. Second thing a grown ass man should never wear is an Apple Watch. Apple Watches are not mature, they are not stylish. If you're a grown ass man, you're wearing a grown ass watch. So I know what he means. To a lot of people, these smart watches aren't the most attractive, but I don't think they're supposed to be. For some people, they're a health or fitness device and they rely on them, so to say you should never wear one is a bit harsh. Number three is Velcro slash fake leather wallets and overly stuffed wallets. Number three is a grown ass wallet. This is also something that a lot of guys do, right? They'll just jam a bunch of crap in their pockets. He's mostly right about this one. I don't think there's anything specifically wrong with Velcro or fake leather, but having something really bulky in your pocket isn't a great look. And yeah, if you're having to jam a bunch of stuff in your pockets, then it means you're probably carrying too much and a bag would be a good idea. Plus, there's another opportunity to add some style to the outfit. Number four is extreme denim. The number four, which is extreme denim. If your jeans are really extreme, you should never wear them as an adult dude. And what he means by this is anything too tight, too baggy or too ripped, for example. And on a whole, I've got to agree with this one. And I think it's something I've talked about in the past, but we see trends come along like distressed jeans, for example, but they progressively become more and more extreme. So they start off as distressed, then they get ripped, then they get torn, and then they're basically hanging off your body. It starts to become a parody of itself. And it's like the designers are thinking, how silly can we make these look? Number five is shorts below the knee. Shorts that come down past your knee, gentlemen, no deal. Two inches above the knee, minimum. This is just another piece of outdated advice in my opinion. Saying two inches above the knee is such an arbitrary piece of advice and is not going to suit everyone. It depends what look you're going for and what your body type is. Shorts have been worn at all lengths throughout history, so wear whatever you like best. 
Number six, fake designer goods. Something else that's unacceptable is fake designer goods. Absolutely agree with this one. Support brands if possible. Fake stuff often won't look right and you won't have the same feel as the real thing. If you can, then save up and get genuine clothing and you'll be much happier. Number seven and eight are ones we've already seen, Crocs and sandals. Something else that's totally unacceptable are Crocs. We're also gonna toss in dad sandals, right? If you wanna do something like this, a nice clean Birkenstock gentleman, you just gotta make sure your feet aren't funky. So I don't think I need to go over these again, but to be fair to him, he doesn't say he dislikes sandals. It's just when people have horrible toenails, which makes sense. Number nine is body spray. Body spray is also a deal breaker when it comes to an adult dude. Yeah, I agree with this one. If you have the perfect outfit, but you smell bad, it can ruin everything. I'm not saying you need a perfumed scent though. Something I've really been liking are these salt crystal roll-ons. They just neutralize body odor without adding any smell and they're all natural. Number 10 is bad belts, but it's pretty much a segue for him to talk about his sponsor. So I'm mostly gonna skip over it. But there's one thing he says that really stood out to me. All right, something else is when you mismatch your leather. You make sure that your leathers match in terms of your belt shoe combination. Matching your leather is the biggest myth out there. It's the most outdated, debunked, S-tier, awful fashion advice ever. Wear black and brown leather together all day long. It looks absolutely fine. If anything, when you make your shoes and belt match, it looks too costumey. Well, in my opinion, anyway. Number 12 is piercings. This is the next thing that adult men don't do, right? Piercings are a weird thing, right? If they're in your face, you look a little low class, low budget. It's a weird one for him to bring up considering he has both of his ears pierced. He does call himself out on that though. But honestly, I don't think they look bad on him. Piercings are a big part of people's look and personal style. So I say go for it. Number 13 is tattoos, specifically on the hands, face, and neck. Tattoos on your face, on your neck, on your hand. Don't be mad when they don't wanna hire you. So the point he's making is that a lot of boring, traditional, backwards companies won't hire you if you have tattoos. And unfortunately, he's probably right. But my argument would be, are those the kinds of places you want to be working? I think tattoos, just like piercings, are a huge part of people's personal tastes and styles. And I think we need to not discourage people from being themselves just in case they aren't able to land some boring office job in the future. In all likeliness, if you're getting those tattoos, then you'll probably end up somewhere creative with people who are open-minded. Number 14 is wearing a suit that isn't tailored. You wearing an untailored suit as an adult man, you do need to spend a little cash getting it tailored, getting it altered. Yeah, I mostly agree with this one. Although off-the-shelf suits are getting better and better, Having one tailored is always going to be king. Even small adjustments like leg and sleeve length, they don't cost much and can make a huge difference. So this is a very good piece of advice. Number 15 to 18 is suit accessories like lapels, pocket squares, and skinny ties. Speaking of suits, the next thing we gotta talk about is some of the accessories or accoutrements of your suit. This isn't my strong point, but I do agree that less is more with suits. Keeping it simple always looks best in my eyes and is surely the way to go if you don't feel very confident in suits like me. Number 19 and 20 are novelty socks and ties. Funny socks aren't funny, neither are funny ties. Funny underwear are also something that you as an adult man should never wear. I love this. We've got two videos here saying what grown men should wear and they completely contradict each other. But yeah, totally agree with him on this one. Number 21 and 22 are fedoras and backwards caps. Did somebody say stupid? You look stupid with a weird fedora on. And backward baseball hats, they make you look like a punk. I don't actually think fedoras look bad, but they've been memed on so hard in recent years that they're basically unsavable at this point, so I'd say avoid them as well. As for backwards caps, I think this might be one of the things I agree on. They do look slightly immature. I still think it's fine, especially if you're active or just relaxing, but I kind of get his point. 23, he says to avoid lame sunglasses. Lame ass sunglasses also make you look stupid, right? Young dudes can get away with wearing like fun sunglasses, but as you start to mature, as you start to get a little age under your belt, Mature men know, yo, I gotta wear something a little cleaner, a little classic, a little sexier. He doesn't specify what he means, but I reckon he's talking about more contemporary shapes and colors. While I appreciate he's basically saying to stick to classics like Wayfarers, which I agree you cannot go wrong with, sunglasses are such a small part of an outfit that I think experimenting with them should be encouraged. Especially if you're wearing something a bit more classic all over, 
go wild a bit with the sunglasses as a standout piece. 24 and 25 is a mixture of offensive graphic t-shirts, tank tops, and loud shirt designs. Any type of offensive graphic t-shirt is horrible. Tank tops, not amazing. If you're wearing a shirt that's too loud, too bright, too vibrant, it also reduces your sexiness. First up, yeah, offensive graphic t-shirts, I agree chuck them in the bin. Tank tops, on the other hand, I think look so cool on their own or under a shirt, so I say go for them. And as for loud design t-shirts, I think they do have a place in people's wardrobes. Wearing them as a standout piece in an outfit where everything else is more subtle is a great look and can be a good way to incorporate different colors textures and designs. Overall, I do think there's some very good tips here, but some of it is quite old fashioned, like don't mix your leathers and don't get tattoos. These are things that I just feel like aren't true anymore, but they always crop up in videos and articles like this. So that's all I'm gonna look at for today. What do you guys make of them? My feeling is that there's definitely some valuable information, but I'm a little bit put off by how that information is delivered. It kind of makes you feel stupid if you're not following their advice. I also think a lot of their advice is geared towards a more plain, non-adventurous style, which I personally find quite boring. But I understand that we all have different tastes and some people don't care as much as I do, so that's okay. It's inevitable that we're all going to disagree about fashion, especially on the internet. My main takeaway is that you probably shouldn't be dressing to impress other people. I've said it before and I'll say it again, you look best in what you're comfortable in and what you like. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Sarah.